Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about using specific language while writing. So we've been um, working on little strategies here and there to make our writing at the sixth grade level. And one of those things is going to be to use specific language. So we don't want to be too vague or too broad. Um, we got to get specific when we write within our paragraphs. And that's going to help make your paragraph a little more beefy and not just a few sentences. It's going to really help you. When you start using this strategy, it's going to help you add some length to each one of your paragraphs. So first, we got to understand general language is going to be something that describes a large category. For example, cereal or sports or stuff like that. Specific language describes smaller categories or individual things and actions. Um, so instead of cereal, maybe we're talking Cheerios. Or instead of sports, we're talking football. And by understanding that we need to get more specific as we get into each paragraph, that's going to help us add some depth to our writing. So we'll be working on um, adding examples and explanations that we talked about in our last video, and now getting more specific with our details. So you can see here on my uh, little whiteboard, we have kind of a, a tree of general to specific. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here for you. So take a look here. Food is at the top. Obviously, food is extremely general. You could talk about dairy, then meat, and plants. And within plants, you could talk grains, fruit, or vegetables. Within vegetables, you could talk about the roots, the pods, and the greens. When talking about greens, you could get even more specific to spinach, collards, or lettuce. Or we could really dive deep into lettuce and talk about iceberg lettuce, butter crunch lettuce, and romaine lettuce. So let's do some practice. I'm working on figuring out things that are more specific versus general. So which one of these is more specific? Is it the hammer, the tool, or the hardware? Okay, now how about this one? Which one is more specific? Sports, contact sports, or hockey? How about now? Which one is the most specific? Washing machine, electrical appliance, or household convenience? Which one is the most specific? Difficulties of the first year in the middle school, getting used to eight classes in a day, or problems in school? Which one is the most specific? Buying a car, undertaking a major financial commitment, or accepting a burden of independent life? So strong writing strikes a balance between specific and general language. So we don't always want to be super general. We don't always want to be super specific. we got to strike a balance there. Um, talk about some general things and then get a little more specific as you go. Um, you can't be too general and then never get to the specifics because your reader is going to leave with a lot of questions. But you can't just be always specific because your reader might not know where you started. So you want to be general and work your way to more specific in each paragraph. So oftentimes, a topic sentence uses more general language than the sentences that support the topic sentence. So you'll have your topic sentence to start your paragraph. You'll add some explanations and some details, and you're going to get more specific as you go with those. So for example, maybe your topic sentence is, the sociable old movie theater may be a thing of the past. And then an example and explanation, you're going to get more specific. So remember, we talked about examples and explanation in class earlier. Now we're talking about how to write good examples and explanations by using specific language. So here we go. Uh, the jokes in the ticket line and the smell of popcorn are no longer able to lure people away from the comforts of Netflix and Amazon, and Amazon video. So there we didn't just talk about how um, movie theaters aren't getting as many people anymore. We're talking about how we're getting specific. We're giving details and examples and explanations. So specific details that refer to the five senses convey these ideas vividly. So for example, the smell of popcorn. We talked about the smell of popcorn isn't necessarily enough to lure people in anymore because they have Netflix, they have Amazon Video, uh, Prime or whatever. Um, they have other means to watch movies without actually having to go somewhere to the movie theater. So which one of these does a better job? Um, number one, the teacher was in a bad mood today. Or number two, the teacher is mumbling as he brushes past us in the hall and doesn't even nod when we greet him. So it's really important that when we're writing, we show our readers by using their imagination with the five senses rather than telling them what is happening. 
So it makes for a better story. So you don't just tell them the teacher's mad. We showed him by saying he was mumbling, he was ignoring us, those sorts of things. So show your reader, don't tell your reader. Use those five senses to your advantage. So I need you to practice some on your own, and I'll see you all next time.